Hey y'all. So for today, we have a yin practice. It's gonna be down on the ground. If you happen to have some blocks, a blanket, a bolster, a pillow, grab those. We'll need them nearby. Let's meet on the mat. All right. So find yourself in a comfortable seat. And that word does a lot of work, which means whatever you need it to be. I like to sit up on a bolster and allow my legs to cross, but that just happens to be the way, way that my hips and knees are built. You might find yourself rocking a little forward and a little back until you find that neutral position that allows you to sort of let it go a little bit. Relax the chin, the jaw, the eyes, the ears, and if it's comfortable for you, you can close those eyes for a few deep breaths. Today's yin practice is designed to help you de-stress not only your body, but also your mind. Oftentimes when we take ourselves deeper into a posture by adding more time, we're forced to reconcile and release some residual tension that might be lingering. So take a few more deep breaths here. You might begin to cultivate a sense of pressing down into the earth through the tailbone or through the glutes. And you might feel the crown of the head rise toward the ceiling, the sky. You might begin to feel the hips relax a little allowing the knees to fall further down or the muscles of the thigh and calf to simply let go. Then you might shift your focus into your lower abdomen or low back. Allow the weight to be even a little bit further toward the back of the mat. and allow the breath to fill up the abdomen without much control or squeezing in or out. Simply flowing naturally. Allow the chest to soften, the shoulder blades to drop a little further down the back and the tips of the shoulders to grow heavy. No need to squeeze them together or in any particular direction. And we'll take three more deep breaths here from the bottom to the top, inhale. Allow the exhale to happen naturally. Two more like that. One more still. And if you're ready and it's comfortable, go ahead and open your eyes and come back into the room. Our first proper posture after seated pose will be sphinx, which is done on the belly. Um, if you like to have the bolster nearby or the blocks nearby, they might come in handy for this posture. Working your way down, mm, yeah. And then placing one elbow underneath the shoulder and two elbows underneath the shoulder. The most natural position here is to have those elbows a little further forward and wider than you think you might need. Uh, if you're feeling like you're not getting much of a stretch in the back of the body, go ahead and scoot them a little closer in. No sense in craning the head up too much. 
simply find that neutral position for the top of the spine. No need to squeeze anything in the lower body. Simply allow the belly to press into the floor as you inhale. And then to naturally exhale. A few more breaths like that. As you settle into this one posture, it can be helpful to find one thing to gaze at softly with the eye. Oftentimes, if we close our eyes, we can take ourselves out of the room. So keeping the eyes present can be very helpful to staying present in the body and allowing the parts of the body to relax. We'll take just a few more breaths here. And of course, if you're not ready to remove yourself from this pose just yet, feel free to pause the video and continue breathing as long as you like. Some postures are often held for two, three, four, five minutes. easiest way to reset here is to actually bring the forehead down to the mat, spread the elbows out a little bit wide and find a neutral position for the neck. We'll actually come back up into our Sphinx pose. We're going to add in the quadriceps stretch. So I'll take my right hand and put it at a diagonal angle. It can be more supportive here. Not necessary. You might be able to get just as good a stretch by keeping the forehead down toward the mat. You can reach back and look for your left foot. Now, oftentimes this position is easier to access with a strap like this. I'm going to go ahead and just use my hand, but I brought the strap along. It's not to tug. It's more to find the middle of the stretch where it feels right in the meat of the muscle and then take the opportunity to breathe deep here and see what you're clenching oftentimes in this position i'll clench my left hip flexor and possibly my right side upper chest i'm trying to relax those as i allow the stretch to happen in the quadriceps Take one more deep breath here. And slowly allow that foot to come back to neutral, swap out the arms, maybe rock the hip side to side, and go again for side number two. Again, if your shoulder doesn't like this, if you feel it particularly crunchy up toward the ear or a sharp pain, uh, opt for a strap a robes like belt, a belt of some kind, or even like a, a blanket looped around can be helpful here, a t-shirt to give you access to that foot. Well, we are getting that nice juicy stretch on the front of the quadricep. You also adding a little bit of uh, strength to the back. Try to release the muscles that don't seem to be necessary part of this posture. And allow the mind and the breath to focus on those areas that you're stretching, such as the front of the right quad or the open uh, chest and shoulder on the right side. 
One more breath. Ooh, and then slowly allowing that foot to release. Again, the palms to the mat. A quick neutral forehead down. We've lengthened the front of the legs and the chest a little bit, so let's add a little length to the bottom of the feet. In this neutral position, tuck the toes and send some amount of weight back toward the heels. Now, if this is not fun for the knees, if the knees say no, stop sooner rather than later, options to sort of temper your stretches to add a pillow, a blanket, or something in between. And of course, if it's really just not happening with the toes tucked fully under today, you can release the toes. You can come up to a neutral seated position here. See if you can mentally send your thoughts into the big toe to try to distribute the weight evenly across the balls of the feet as even as we can. Big deep breaths. And as you focus in on the awareness of your body, particularly the toes in this posture, let's see if you can use that to reset and relax the mind. We'll go for three more deep breaths. Allowing the eyes to stay open and present. Allowing the jaw and the ears to be soft. Ooh, one more. And then do come forward ever so slowly. Make a face. Say naughty words. Tap out the toes. Ooh, good stuff. Okay, not much more to do. We are going to flip over onto our backs. Make sure you have your blocks nearby. We don't need them just yet, but they'll come in handy in a second. In order to go the opposite direction, let's pull the knees into the chest and see how far they want to come down today. They don't have to be that close. Uh, working to lengthen the back of the body on the mat. There's a sense of tucking the chin, sort of, or pressing the tail a little bit more down toward the mat. And if that means the knees pop up a little higher, that's fine. Just hold this position. Opposite of what we did with our quadricep and hip flexor stretches in our sphinx pose. Find yourself in a yin posture and your mind says, well, what now? You're in the right place. The answer is your breath, nothing else. Indeed, it's cultivating this present moment awareness in only the breath and what our body's currently doing. It is often the easiest thing to bring us back to reset. Let's do two more deep breaths. And you can slowly whew, start to press the feet down and feel uh, the space in the back of the body. Allow the breath to be natural here. 
Just a couple deep breaths. Next posture will be a supported bridge. So we're going to grab one of those blocks. That was almost nearby. I want to start this posture on the lowest setting, and possibly setting number two. Get yourself into a bridge pose, pressing down into the feet. You know, not the big one where you put your hands up over your shoulders, but just the, the easy one. And put the block, eh, let's go this way, in a neutral position with the sacrum fully supported. The top of the sacrum, that triangle at the base of the spine, and the base of the tailbone. Now you're going to get a little bit of a stretch here in this lower position. It all depends on what your hips have been doing lately and how you're feeling today. If this doesn't feel like much for the front side of the hip flexors, you can adjust to setting number two. Now before you jump up to setting number three, you could go with two blocks or you could begin to extend the legs a little further forward. This is my preference, as opposed to getting the hips higher off the ground is actually finding a fully extended type position. Making sure the shoulder blades stay underneath you and then the hips are more free to open right here across the front side, those bony protrusions that you think of when you think of your hips. And then the difficult thing here is to relax. And mentally, maybe you feel fine, but physically the body isn't naturally inclined to be in this kind of position. You find that the exhales are quite powerful here. and that there's room to relax a little bit more than you think you can. We'll do two more deep breaths. Allow the belly to fill up. And ever so slowly, slide those feet back up in. Very simple lift, remove the block. And especially now, feel all that space on the back of the body as it connects, especially the low back to the floor. By stretching the hip flexors, we have a little more room to allow those hips to tilt to a neutral position, thus connecting most of us more with the floor. Our final posture before Shavasana will be supportive butterfly pose. So you'd like two blocks. The preference of the height of the blocks or the position of the feet away from the body is entirely yours. Go to the spot where you feel like you're getting a 70 to 80 percent stretch, not the furthest you could go. Remember that the beauty and the reset in yin is time, not the depth of a particular stretch. Big breath in. Big breath out. You might find the glutes or the inner thighs tend to tighten to protect here. It's comfortable for you to do so. See if you can relax a little more.
one more deep breath. Using your hands or whatever, bring those feet to about hips width and the knees back to neutral. A couple deep breaths here. And then extend all the way, allowing the toes to fall open. the hips to settle into the mat. You might squeeze and relax. A couple things, fists, fingers, face, and jaw, as you enter into your final resting pose. It may be tempting to re-engage or to remain active. See if you can allow the space in your mind to still fluctuations in your body. You decide when this posture is finished. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day six. Until then. <laughs>